You're tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a, well, what is it today? Usually it's a Power Rankings Tuesday, but we're a little bit different this week. Because Christmas was on a Monday and there was three NFL games on a Monday. So yesterday was kind of like a Wednesday where we had a really interesting longer interview with Gary Myers. Encourage you guys to check that out if you didn't already. Talking about Bill Belichick's future and the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well as Gary's new book. Today is going to be more like a Monday. So it's a a Tucker Monday. I don't know. No, that doesn't make sense. It's a Tuckheads Tuesday where I'm going to give you my takeaway. It's a takeaway Tuesday with my takeaways on every game, week 16 in the NFL. And then tomorrow we'll actually have a Power Rankings Wednesday. College Draft Podcast has already been published for this week as well with Emery's picks against the spread and a prospect or two to watch in every college bowl game this week. So encourage you to check that one out. As always, it is a new week, which means we'll have new winners. For those of you that spread the word via social media, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod, you know, you make it real easy on me when you do it, and then you email me to show me you do it. That makes it real interesting, easy for me to pick winners. Got a cool press pass from that Eagles-Giants game yesterday. Ross at RossTucker.com, always with the sponsors. Love those of you that take advantage of them. We don't take them unless we use them. And then the YouTube Shout out, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Make sure when you subscribe and reply, you say, hey, Ross, I want the cameo style video, bro. I, I want the free cameo video that people pay for. Patron of the day, Patrick McAdams. We are, we are getting towards the end here of the new patrons, but what a run it has been. Patreon.com slash RT Media. What a run of football games we had. Over the last three days, we got a lot to get to. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Ross, before we get to each of these games, what were your overall themes for Week 16 across the NFL? You know, by the way, Jack, this reminded me, I might start to ask you, like, what your themes are, too. Like, in case I missed something, I guess my takeaways were just the biggest ones, probably what we already knew. Any given day in the NFL. You know, there's a movie. It's called Any Given Sunday. Well, this weekend it was Any Given Saturday, Any Given Sunday, and Any Given Monday. Who had the Steelers putting up 30-some points and blowing out the Bengals by 20-plus? Who had the Bills having to scrape by by the hair on the chinny-chin-chin? What's that from, Jack? You heard that one before? Chinny-chin-chin. That's like an old, like... Know, That's like, isn't that, isn't that like the, um, what's it called? Um, the wolf with the old lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a nursery rhyme or something. Anyway, and then who had, I mean, Sunday, not as many, but I don't think people had the Falcons blowing out the Colts or the Browns destroying the Texans the way they did. But even, man, I mean, yesterday, and, and by the way, I don't think people had the Patriots going to Denver and winning that game. But yesterday, unbelievable. The Raiders winning at Arrowhead. What has happened to the Chiefs? The Eagles almost blew it against the Giants. And then the Ravens. I have a feeling where they're going to end up on tomorrow's power rankings. Taking the Niners to the woodshed. Just just an aw- this is what I love about the sport, right? Like, I love that just when you think you know, just when we think we have it all figured out, it is a week-to-week league. There's new game plans every week, and sometimes they get you, sometimes they don't. Some other thoughts I think I need to chime in on here. Jack, the Jets, according to Woody Johnson, are bringing back their GM and their head coach. You know, a lot of times in the NFL, you don't get a mulligan. Right? Like, they don't care that your quarterback got hurt. There is no mulligan. This isn't golf. These aren't your buddies. But Woody Johnson going to give Joe Douglas and Robert Sala a mulligan because of the Aaron Rodgers injury, which, 
you know, if Aaron Rodgers hadn't gotten hurt and the Jets underperformed, those guys would be gone. So Rodgers getting hurt actually bought those guys another year, interestingly. By the way, they almost blew that game against the Commanders. That would have been epic Jets timing on an announcement like that to let the Commanders come back from down like 20-something. I want to make sure to give a congratulations to Lions fans. We'll talk about it when we get to their game, but 30 years? 30 years? Are you, are you kidding me? I mean, that is... Shout out in, in particular to KJ, Christopher Jackson, who helps us with our website, RossTucker.com. He is the man. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed that in Detroit. And they got another big game Saturday night. Lions-Cowboys. I'm looking forward to that one. The other things that jumped out to me just themes-wise, Jack, Flacco. Just Flacco. I mean, he probably won't win it, but I want to see the odds for comeback player of the year on DraftKings because he deserves it. The other two things that jumped out, turnovers are like everything, man. I mean, you watch that just yesterday. You watch the Chiefs-Raiders game, two defensive touchdowns. Are you kidding me? You watch the Eagles game where those two turnovers by the Eagles in the second half gave the Giants a chance to win the game, even though the Eagles had dominated. And then last night, with the Ravens picking off the Niners five times, including four times Brock Purdy. And then the last one is just roughing the passer penalties. Just a bunch of really, really bad ones. But that is what the officials have been taught. They've been taught, when in doubt, throw the flag. So I would say get used to it until they have review or until they change that standard. Speaking of changing the standard, I got a New Year's resolution for you. How about learning a new language? I am always incredibly impressed by people that know a second language. And I guess I would say in particular, people that went out of their way to learn a second language. It's actually the best time to do it is when you're really young. This would be a great gift to give to your kids, the gift of a second language when they're super young. And Babbel's the way to do it. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Love their tips and tools that are rooted in real life situations. Start there. Start with like maybe you're going on a trip or just things you want to be able to do. I got a special limited time deal for you guys to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription. But only for you guys, our listeners at Babbel.com slash Ross. So get 55% off at babbel.com slash Ross. It's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Ross. Rules and restrictions may apply. All right, Ross, we'll start with, well, they never let poor Rudolph join in any games until Christmas Eve Eve, where he dominates 34-11. I love that. I love that, Jack. That was one of your better comments in a while. You used to have friends that would have a party Eve of the Eve which I always enjoyed. I mean, George Pickens, absolutely redonkulous in this game after a tumultuous week where he stopped blocking because he didn't want to get hurt, and then he admitted that. He went out, and that's, that's why you throw him the ball. I mean, had two long catch-and-run touchdowns, had a beautiful catch near the sideline. Mason Rudolph played pretty well, certainly played better than Trubisky had. Isn't it amazing? how often the teams themselves don't know who their better quarterback is. I think about that, right? Like they see these guys every, that's why, that's why I always joke. People are like, do the coaches are around them every day. Yeah. The coaches are around Mason Rudolph and Trubisky every day. And they had Trubisky starting and not Mason Rudolph. Jake Browning was terrible. I mean, terrible, especially in the first half, two interceptions. They're down 24, nothing. He got a lot of uh, what I call empty calorie yards in the second half. I got a lot of empty calories this weekend. Miles Jack, Patrick Peterson. I mean, it, like, who are these guys finding the fountain youth making plays for the Steelers on D? Chargers, they look like a new team post daily, but Buffalo still pulls out the 24-22 win. So I don't know if we got confirmation that Sebastian Joseph Day, who they cut on Friday, the day before the game, is a captain, he must have done something. I mean, he must have done something they really didn't like. 
to cut a guy like that. He didn't, we went unclaimed on waivers, by the way. So now he has a chance to sign somewhere else. And I bet you a good team will sign him just to get depth on the D-line for the playoff race. Probably, maybe it's smart by him. Pick up some playoff money. Bills had a bunch of penalties. They did not play well, but they got it done. Game-winning field goal drive late. And it was Gabe Davis. Every, like, eight weeks, Gabe Davis is like a like the groundhog. Like, every eight weeks, Gabe Davis comes out and uh, doesn't see his shadow and has a great game. Josh Allen had two rushing touchdowns. That's over 40 touchdowns for Josh Allen again. Again. I'm not a huge fantasy guy, but he must be dominant with all those touchdowns. Easton Stick started hot for the Chargers. Actually gave him a chance. Just too many... Uh, too many red zones where they had to settle for Dicker the kicker field goals. I have Josh Allen in fantasy, and I can confirm he has been dominant. The Falcons, they keep their playoff hopes alive with a 29-10 win at home over Indy. Just watched that full game this morning, Jack. Got up at 5, so I got about 5 hours sleep because I've got the Falcons at the Bears Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time on CBS, my third NFL on CBS game this weekend. So hopefully some of you guys or Bears, or Falcons fans, and you can check that out, or maybe just see when they bring us up on the red zone from time to time. The Colts did pretty much nothing after the first drive. They marched down the field on the first drive, and then nothing. Falcons play a lot of guys on defense. They're much improved on that side of the ball. A lot of young guys. Jesse Bates is a tremendous player. They're getting nice production from Calais Campbell. Zach Harrison had a good game. Heineke was solid for Atlanta on offense, didn't turn it over, although, man, he throws the ball into some tight, tight windows. Plus, the Falcons got their run game back where they want it to be. They got a three-headed monster, man. Patterson, Algier, and then obviously B. John Robinson, who just, he is a smooth, silky smooth player for Atlanta. Concerns about Green Bay's defense, they continue to arise following a narrow 33-30 victory against Carolina. Well, that's why I think I tweeted, uh, when was that, Sunday? I've lost track at this point. <laughs> at Ross Tucker NFL, please follow me on every social platform that you're on. But anyway, the, the Packers kind of got what they wanted, right? They got a win. Jordan Love played well. They feel good about it. Packers fans, I should say. But, I mean, you can't get torched by Bryce Young and the Panthers. Huge step forward, by the way, by Bryce Young and the Panthers offensively. And even though they lost, which they wanted to win, especially since they don't have their own first-round pick, you got to feel better about that if you're a Panthers fan. And if you're a Packers fan, you got to feel like, okay, Matt LaFleur has to fire Joe Barry. It's just not, not good enough. Jordan Love played really well, especially late, by the way, when, when they, they needed it. Speaking of need it, um, I might be needing – some DoorDash this week. You guys can check it out on Even Money. My picks, my bets for the week. If you feel good about your picks, but you're not sure what to eat, make it easy on yourself. Order it on DoorDash. Now you can root for your squad while your food and drinks are on the way. So that means burgers, chips, dips, soda, pizza, wings, and so much more delivered straight to your door. And then, of course, Jack, just wash it down with some Labatt Blue Lights. Had a couple of those this weekend. Hopefully you guys saw that picture. My show me your beer for the weekend. Labatt Blue actually sent me a nice hat. I got a nice quarter zip. I lead the league in free quarter zips that people have sent me. There is no way anybody has more free quarter zips than me at this point. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, not the, not the quarter zips. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. The Flacco meter is just legitimately broken at this point. Cleveland has all but secured a playoff bid, a 35-22 victory over the Texans. I'm assuming they can clinch Thursday night when they play the Jets. They can't lose that game. Although in the NFL, they could lose that game. But Flacco, it's just incredible, man. I mean, Amari Cooper set the franchise record for receiving yards in a game. But Flacco gives him a chance. I mean, Flacco has... Some serious trust with Cooper right now. Honestly, I think Flacco probably would get my vote for comeback player of the year. I guess some Niners fans are saying it should be Purdy. And I guess I can see that because he had the elbow surgery. I don't know. Like, it's such a weird award. 
Like the people we're talking about are like Purdy, Damar Hamlin, who I think has played like eight snaps on defense this year, maybe somebody said. And then Flacco has only played like the last four games. It's weird. But Flacco like came back from the dead, dude. Like Flacco was on his couch dead. Like this, that's unbelievable. Brown didn't even have a field goal kicker for most of this game, and they still won. That could have hurt them. Texans need uh, C.J. Stroud back ASAP after he missed his second game. I think he'll be back this week. After beating the Vikings 30-24, to the Detroit Lions are divisional champions for the first time in 30 years. So kudos to the Lions and their fans. Jameer Gibbs and Amon Ra St. Brown had big days to lead the offense. It looked, again, Jack, like one of those games that the Lions are going to blow, but they're not they're not the same old Lions. They're, they're new Lions. They don't, they don't blow these games. They have a different culture under Dan Campbell. I'll say this too. Nick Mullins, he should always be available in a primetime game to be the backup quarterback if the team has injuries. They should not assign. Nick Mullins is electric. He is either going to put up an awesome play for the offense in big yards or a turnover. That guy is the definition of YOLO. I mean, he is a turnover machine. He is nothing if not entertaining. I'll watch any game Nick Mullins ever plays. I'll tell you that much right now. Justin Jefferson, by the way, ridiculous for the Vikings. Some of the catches that guy makes, just stupendous. By the way, is stupendous a real word? I think so. It sounds weird when I say it like that. It sounds like it's almost like a kind of like redonkulous, like a made up word. I feel like stupendous is absolutely a real world. A real yeah, word. no, it is. <clears throat> so we'll move forward. Jacoby Brissett, he commands an almost improbable comeback against the Jets, but they will slam the door at the final seconds, 30 28. So the big story out of this game obviously, the Jets get the win that would have been an epic collapse, but Sam Howe is blowing it. Sam Howe, I feel like a few weeks ago, Jack, was pretty much locked in to be the commander's quarterback next year. They're going to have a new GM. They're going to have a new head coach. And I don't know, with the way he's played these last few games, getting benched, playing horrible, I don't know how you can you, – you can't go in. You'd have to, you have to give yourself another option. Brissett's been so much better than him. The commanders are going to have to give themselves some other option at some point. Just a disastrous start for the Commanders in every way. Like if you watch that game, it was like laughable how bad the Commanders were early in that game. Seattle stays in the wild card hunt like a 2017 road victory in Tennessee. Second straight week, the Seahawks get it done in the fourth quarter, which is why they're going to be my fourth quarter team of the week, brought to you by HubSpot Sales Hub, the software that helps teams have their best Q4 performance by giving them the analytics tools they need to build a winning playbook. So I couldn't give it to them last week because we usually pick it on Monday and Drew Locke's 92-yard touchdown drive against the Eagles was on a Monday night. So then they went out and did it again. Geno Smith, the Seahawks, they need a touchdown, goes the length of the field, back-to-back games, back-to-back weeks. The Seahawks pull it out late. And right now, they got a playoff spot if it ended the day. Kudos to Pete Carroll and that Seahawks bunch for never giving up and coming through in the clutch. Meanwhile, for the Titans, might be the end for Derrick Henry, man. And if he's going out, kind of going out in style, threw for a touchdown, ran for another one, been an all-time great for the Titans, going to be a free agent after the year, and uh, it kind of feels like they might, they might move on. Baker and the Bucks they keep their lead in the NFC North, 30-12 beatdown of the Jags. So this is really stunning for both teams, right? Like, this is a very, very impressive, impressive run that the Bucks are on, where they can actually clinch. They play, I think they play, yeah, they play the Saints, I want to say, on Sunday, I think, Jack. And if they win that game, they clinch the NFC South. Meanwhile, because the Bucs have now won four in a row, they're, they're hot. Like They're looking like they could even be dangerous in that first playoff game against either the Eagles or the Cowboys. 
Meanwhile, for the Jags, goodness gracious. I mean, they both have gone in totally opposite directions. Totally opposite directions, right? Where Baker and the boys have won four straight. Trevor Lawrence and the gang in Jacksonville lost four straight. Lawrence hurts his shoulder. He's gotten hurt like three straight games. And uh, the Jags are in a free fall. Somehow they still lead the AFC South, which says something about something. Believe it or not, the Bears are still in playoff contention at the win at home over Arizona, 27-16. Right, but they're like in everything would have to go right. Uh, playoff contention, which is not going to happen. There's too many 7-8s, and eights, too many 8-7s. and sevens. I wonder, like, do they really do all the machinations? Because it's like, do they really realize, well, if this team wins and that means that team lost and vice versa? Anyway, evidently they do. Justin Fields... I thought he was incredible, scrambling, making plays with his legs, throwing the ball. Cole Komet was having a big game. Khalil Herbert had a big game. The Bears pretty much took care of business, kind of let the Cardinals get back in it a little bit late, but kind of too little too late at that point for Arizona. Miami locks in a playoff spot with the Cowboys lose a step in the NFC East race, 22-20. The Cowboys just make critical errors, man. I thought they were probably the better team for most of this game. They actually take the lead late, but they just make critical errors that they can't make. And kudos to the Dolphins. Dolphins could have been my hub spot fourth quarter team of the week with the way they were able to get that game-winning drive after the Cowboys had gone ahead. Parsons was incredible. He had eight pressures in less than two and a half seconds. You know how hard it is to get to a guy seven yards behind another man in less than two and a half seconds. That is not a lot of time. Dolphins defense got after Dak themselves most of the game as well. Jason Sanders had those big five field goals. New England beats Denver on the road in prime time, 26-23. Telling you, man, Belichick doesn't care about the draft choice that Patriots fans do. And Belichick is trying to get to that record that Don Shula record as soon as he possibly can. I thought Zappi played pretty well again for the Patriots. Christian Barmore had a career night on Saturday night or Sunday night. I've lost track at this point. How about Chad Ryland? He has not been a good kicker for the Patriots this year. Misses like a chip shot. And, of course, later on in the game makes, a, uh, makes the game winner from distance. Passing is just overrated anyways. But Antonio Pierce might have solidified his job security with a 2014 road upset over the Chiefs. I wrote it last, I wrote it in November, literally a month ago. I think it was November 26th that Antonio Pierce was going to be the Raiders' next head coach. Guess what? Antonio Pierce is going to be the Raiders' next head coach. They're not firing him. Mark Davis is not getting somebody else again. Chiefs' offense just doesn't look right. I mean, it is off. Although they still would have won the game. If it weren't for those two defensive touchdowns in seven seconds by the Raiders. Samir White, by the way, finished the game. That was almost embarrassing for the Chiefs, the way the Raiders were able to just run the ball at will on them late to close that game out. Tommy DeVito gets benched, but Philly just scrapes by the Giants, 33-25. thought the Eagles and Hurts looked better on offense, but the turnovers and some critical errors allowed the Giants to get back in it. And it's funny, like people thought I was ripping Tommy DeVito on social media, Jack, at Ross Tucker NFL, when I said this is why you do all those $10,000 appearances that you can get while you can get it. I, I wasn't ripping him at all. I was being very matter-of-fact and practical. That was very smart of Tommy DeVito to do those and take those appearances. That's like free money, and it doesn't last forever, so you got to take advantage of it while you can. And we'll wrap things up. Baltimore stuns the Niners on the road Monday Night Football, 33-19. I don't think anybody saw that coming. The question in my mind, and it's going to be a good question for Steve Fezzik on today's Even Money Betting Podcast, how much does that affect the Niners in his power rankings? Or is it still more a product of just the turnovers? A couple of them were kind of fluky. And that the Niners are still the best team? Because that was quite the impressive performance by the Ravens. Lamar was electric. He made the plays, but the star of the game was really that Ravens defense. They've got playmakers at all three levels 
of the defense. Shout out to Mike McDonald, their defensive coordinator. Just outstanding. I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout out to MyFrontPageStory.com. If you didn't get one for your loved one, you blew it. It's too late now. You'll have to just live with that for the rest of your life. Anyway, uh, BackOfficeScheduler.com. SteakhouseSports.com, HumanHeadNYC.com, Sportaculture. How about Pizza Boy Brewing? It's delicious.